Hey Threadheads, Darren here. Welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. Today we're going to be tying Bob Clouser's Clouser Deep Minnow. This is uh, one of those patterns that's kind of evolved over the years and has morphed into about a billion different variations, not unlike the woolly bugger. So Bob Clouser developed this in the mid-1980s and he's used it for both freshwater fishing for species like bass as well as saltwater. And um, when I had chatted with him about the pattern several years ago, he was telling me it was somewhere in the neighborhood between uh, 86 to 115 different species confirmed caught on a Clouser variation of one form or another. This one here is my favorite variation of the classic Clouser. This is a, a brown and pink or a tan and pink. And it's got a nice kind of natural look to it. Don't forget to leave a comment down below and we'll get your name entered into the next draw. Let's have a look at the material list and get started. get a fresh hook in the vise. So we're going to be using a Mustad S71 SMP-DT. This is the signature line saltwater hooks. It's a nice two extra heavy, one extra long. I find it a nice uh, fit for clouser type flies. <clears throat> for thread we're going to be using 210D flat wax nylon in white and we're going to color this thread a little bit at the end just to match the tail and the wing color of the fly so we just start by tying on just behind the eye and we're going to just establish a thread base here first we'll wind that down to the bend of the hook and then we'll wind it back want to basically divide this entire length of the hook shank into three parts and we're going to stop at the one-third part and we're going to take some brass eyes and we're just going to tie those on top of the hook shank and we're going to use some cross wraps as well as some figure eight wraps so once you have that a few wraps, you just want to make sure that it's kind of straight on the hook shank. And then we start winding a few wraps one way, go under the hook shank, wrap the other way. And then you'll want to add a few wraps underneath the eyes at the base of the barbell. That'll kind of help give a little bit of support to the eyes, because basically you are tying a round object to another round object so a little bit of extra thread in there doesn't hurt and you want to just make sure that you pull that thread tight every few wraps just to make sure that you take up any slack that there might be as long as the eyes aren't wiggling you should be good and just add a little dab of head cement there to fortify that a touch So for the first material we're going to tie on here, we're going to take a little bit of pearl crystal flash. I'm going to take three strands. On the original uh, Bob Clauser, he tied his, his flash under the wing, but I'm tying this one under the tail. And I don't know that it matters. I like putting it in this position. So I'm going to measure out about uh, hook length, and I'm going to tie this down so that I fold it over and I've got now six strands and I'm going to hold that up as I wind it down to the end of the to the tie-in point there and then we'll wind the thread back just behind the the barbell we'll trim off any of the excess flash And 
Next, we're going to take a little bit of bucktail. So I just take a natural bucktail. And what I'm looking for is just that brown section off of a white bucktail. You want one that has nice length to it, especially when you're getting into some of the larger flies. As I said, if you're tying uh, saltwater flies, typically you'll want them a little bit longer than if you're tying for freshwater for bass or pike. So I've taken a clump of this brown section and we'll just pull out any of the really short fine hairs out of that clump. And then we will, on the other end, we'll take out any hairs that are really long and we'll just stack them back, kind of equal the length of the uh, <clears throat> majority of the hairs. We'll take our thread up in front of that bead, our barbell, and we want to try and keep this hair on top of the hook shank. So we'll start with a few loose wraps. And if your hair goes off to the side like that, it's no big deal. You just grasp the tips and pull it over. And then you can add a few heavier wraps just to make sure that it gets tightened down well. Then we'll go under the hook shank and wrap right behind the bead. And we'll pull the hair up as we spiral back to the end of the tie point. And then we'll spiral back again just behind the eyes and end up in front of the barbell. And we'll trim off that excess butt end at a 45 degree angle. And that's going to help us keep that somewhat iconic cone shape of the uh, clouser head. You can see on the body how we wrapped it with that spiral back and spiral uh, down and back again. Kind of made a crisscross. So you want to add a little bit of durability. So you can either add epoxy, head cement, or in our case we're going to add a little bit of bone dry. Just to give that a bit of protection, add some durability, and protect those bare threads from getting cut easily. So we'll just go ahead and put a fine coat on there, brush it on, and then we'll give it a zap, let it cure. So next we're going to tie in the wing of the fly. And for this one we're going to be using a hot pink bucktail. And we're going to take the white dyed pink hair in this case. You can also use the brown dyed pink if you want a slight variation of it. We're going to take a small clump and again we're going to pull out the any of the finest hairs from the bottom. And any of the really longest ones we're going to pull those out and restack them so that they are in line with the majority of the tips there. And I don't like to stack this in a hair stacker just because you get a really kind of synthetic looking edge on that and it uh, takes away from the natural look of the fly. So we'll just put that, we'll kind of divide it on both sides of the hook and then we will tie that down with a couple looser wraps. Don't want to lock this in yet. We want to make sure that all those hairs are on top of the hook shank before we lock it in. And once you have those all on top, go ahead and give some tighter wraps. And once you got that locked in place, we can go ahead, pull those butt ends up, and we'll give those a snip so that they angle towards the eye. And again, this also helps you keep that cone shape of the head. Now, one of the biggest problems that I see with clousers uh, actually, two of the biggest problems are people tie in the barbells too close to the eye of the hook and also they use too much hair. So it's one of the things that Bob Clouser had talked about as he was tying his fly that uh, he ties them sparser than you think they should be. So this is maybe even a little bit more sparse than he ties them but I like the way it looks. So we added a whip finish to the fly 
And for the last step, we're just gonna add a little bit of color to the head. If you didn't wanna do this step, you can change the color of thread you use to tie the fly. You can use a brown or a pink, whatever you feel fit. So we're just gonna add a little bit of brown Sharpie to the top and the sides of that thread. Let that bleed in a little bit. And to seal that in, we're just gonna take a little bit more of the bone dry and we'll just add that to the top and the sides. And we'll give that a quick cure with our UV light. And then for the bottom, we're just gonna take a little bit of hot pink nail polish and we're just gonna add that so we just basically want to give the top half the brown and the bottom half the pink or if you are got this flying through the water this is actually the way that it's going to ride you've got that weighted eye it's going to keel the hook over so that it rides hook point up so we'll just add this little bit of polish here and then we'll set that aside to let that dry and a few minutes later we can Put that in our box, it's ready to fish. Hey fly tires, thanks for stopping by and checking out my fly tying videos. If you enjoyed the video and want to show your support, hit the thumbs up and share it to your social networks. I hope you consider subscribing to the channel and if you do, be sure to hit the bell icon to get notifications on my latest fly patterns, tips, and reviews. If you have a question or comment, leave a message below. You'll also be entered into the next draw for some of the flies I tie and a few stickers. Until next time, this is Darren saying, keep a hook in your vise. Cheers.